David, it is 930. Do you want to wait for Nancy or do you want to open the hearing or the meeting? Let's get let's just get going, I guess. Okay. Channel 18 is all set and Nancy's on her way in. Excellent. Thank you, Stella. All right, we'll wait for her. David, as a reminder, we will need to do a roll call. Yes, ma'am. All right, we'll get started. So this is the meeting of October 17th, 2022 for the Bonnesville Licensing Authority. Uh, my name is David Nunheimer. I'll be acting chair of this meeting. Uh, with me is Mr. Larry Decker, Mr. John Flores, and um, we expect Nancy Carlson in any moment. We also have our administrative director, uh, Liz Hartsgrove, our uh, liaison officer, Officer Christopher Kelsey, and our licensing authority um, assistant, Erin Logan. So with that going on, I guess the first matter is a special one day license um, application by Dylan Moreno of 427 Main Street to hold the run through the storm 5K run walk, starting at uh, Sturgis Charter Public School at 427 Main Street, Hyannis, on March 25th, 2023, from 6 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Entertainment will be recorded music as well as live amplified music. That's some planning in advance. Go ahead, Ms. Hartsgrove. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, Mr. Decker had, um, are you unable to hear us or... You are unable to hear us. Okay. Um, you can hear us, but you can't speak. Okay. So I think you're going to need to sign out and then come back in. Let's try that. Okay. All right. And then, um, Nance, to make sure that we have a forum, we may need to post, like pause for just a minute for the Monday hearing. Morning. Monday morning gremlins. Yeah. It's usually a north side issue for once. <laughs> We're okay. There's Nancy. We get clouds, we lose power and Internet. There is Nancy and Larry is on. Um, Larry, can you test your mic, please? Can you speak at least to see if we can hear you? No. All right. If, if um, I may, yes, Aaron. Uh, Liz, if I may just interrupt, um, Stone has just asked me um, if Larry can dial in instead of. Um, video in would be helpful. Okay. He can dial in on his phone while he's on video. In the meantime, I am just going to add um, to a um, licensing authority just as a um, remote um, script that we usually do as a precautionary measure to reduce the spread of the virus. Um, this meeting is being held by remote participation for the governor's orders. And I am going to um, take a quick roll call vote um, just to make sure that we do have a quorum. Um, Nancy Carlson Lidman. Here. Mr. Flores. Yeah. David Nonheimer. Here. And Larry Decker with a thumbs up. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, we do have a quorum for um, even with three people. So we may actually proceed and then Larry, we can um, 
uh, once you call in, we can do a test run. So we can proceed with the first item that was read into the minute. Okay, so is Mr. Moreno here? Or anyone from running through the storm? So the running through the storm actually is um, the applicant is a student of searches and it is school time right now. So I am acting on behalf of the students of, of Surges who applied and everything is in order for the application. This is the first event of this kind. It's for the track and field um, team for the East Campus. And there are going to be teachers and uh, parent association members helping along with the event. It has been reviewed by the um, all the departments, and that is one of the stipulations from the police department from Sergeant Perry that there are parents um, involved with the with the event, and it has been confirmed. Okay. On that fine presentation, I take a motion. Um, on the application, oh, I'm sorry, Larry. Okay. No, Larry's still silent. Oh. He's doing the Charlie Chap one today. <laughs> okay. Uh, application made by Dylan Moreno of 427 Main Street, Hyannis, to hold Run Through the Storm 5K Run Walk event starting at Sturgis Charter Public School, 427 Main Street, Hyannis, on March 25th, 2023, from 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. Entertainment will be recorded music as well as live amplified music. I make a motion to accept. I'll second. So we'll have a roll call. Roll call vote. Larry Decker with a thumbs up. On Flores. Yes. Nancy Carlson Lidman. Yes. David Nunheimer. Yes. That is passed unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to skip over the discussion if we can for the um, Jack's Lounge issue and we'll get to that along with the other discussions. We'll just move through the other uh, routine matters. The second matter is a Cope Carter Enterprises Corp DBA Copeland Subaru 24 Ridgewood Ave Hyannis to add 70, 76, and 100 Barstow Road Hyannis. Uh, I assume to their property uh, area. 28 display spaces, 15 employee spaces, one handicap space, two customer spaces, and four showroom spaces, 14 service, 12, 25 storage, and eight service bays for a total of 97 spaces. Uh, I see we have Mr. Scarpellini here. Morning, sir. Good morning. Just making a bigger footprint. <laughs> Just need some more space, especially stall uh, stall capacity uh, for servicing vehicles. So that's a good thing. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions? Hearing none. Anybody from the public who wishes to speak to it? Seeing none, I'll take a motion. Cope Cotter Enterprises Corp. DBA Copeland Subaru, twenty four Ridgewood Ave, Hyannis, to add seventy. 76 and 100 Barnstable Road, Hyannis. 28 display places, 15 employee spaces, one handicapped space, two customer spaces, four showroom spaces, 14 service spaces, 25 storage spaces, and eight service bays for a total of 97 spaces. I make a motion to accept. Second. All in favor, so we'll have a roll call. Roll call vote. Larry Decker, thumbs up. Thank you. Uh, Nancy Carlson Lidman. Yes. John Flores. Yes. And David Nunheimer. Yes. That is unanimous. Thank you. It has been approved. Brian, the licenses will be emailed to you by Aaron. Fantastic. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Thank you. The next matter is Seasonal Food Brands DBA Epicurean Feast 2240 Iano Road, West Barnstable, uh, Cape Cod Community College for a new annual common picture license with indoor seating for 125 and hours of operations uh, from 7 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Is anyone here from the feast 
Uh, yes, sir. Mr. Pace, how are you? Not too bad. Yourself? So far, so good, but it's early. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you, tell us what you're doing over there. And uh, so we took over the uh, the food service for the college from uh, Unidyne. Um, you know, they've been kind of closed there for about two years. So basically, um, you know, we're going to be doing a kind of man grab and go um, as, you know, business picks up a little bit. We'll start adding kind of different features into that um, breakfast and lunch. Um, you know, there's no alcohol involved unless there is a after hour event, which, you know what I mean, would be something that we would discuss later on um, for like one day licenses and stuff like that. So, um you know, basically kind of cut and dry, same services as Unidyne had there before, um, you know, and we're just basically, you know, taking care of anything that the college needs, so. Great. Does anybody have any questions of Mr. Pace? Mr. Flores? Mr. Chairperson, I'm just curious, is this open to the public? Or just uh, doing some faculty? Yes, yep, open to the public, so anybody can come in off the street, basically, um, you know, that once, you know, the building is open, um so you know obviously you have the faculty there the students are there um and then we've had you know a few people that outside events would come in and be able to utilize the, the calf itself plus there is also catering um events if somebody is from off-site they'd be able to use, utilize the service over there to do stuff in obviously the art gallery and the different areas of the um you know the campus will you be advertising to the public to, uh... Uh, not necessarily, uh, it would be more of just kind of keep it in the school. But what happens is there's obviously, um, you know, event coordinators that oversee some of these things and, you know, they will be basically kind of, uh, you know, throwing our name out there to anybody that comes in to be able to utilize, you know, food services there. Okay. And you've met with John Cox and the administration to have this reviewed. Who, John? Yeah, we've, we've been, yeah, we've been open there. We got a, a temporary CV license um, for the past couple of, for the month, the past month and a half, so we've been already operational. Okay. Um, we're already doing catering for President Cox, and we've done a bunch of events and stuff over there already. So, okay, okay, I, I'm on the board of trustees, and I wasn't aware of this. Oh, yeah, 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 no, no, no worries. Um, matter of fact, uh, we got the ribbon cutting, we took care of all that with the new oh, tech okay. building. That was us that we did that spread and everything okay. over there. So, I was there. Okay, yep. thank you. Yep, no problem. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Anybody from the public have any questions? Seeing none, I would take a motion. Mr. Chairman, just real quick before we do the motion, since Mr. Flores is on the Board of Trustees, making sure there are no issues that the board has with him sitting on this vote. Not for me. None? None for okay. me. Great. None for you either, Larry, right? You're good? Okay. All right, so I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't need to recuse myself. No, you do not. Thank you. Okay, I'll take that motion. Okay, seasonal food brands doing business is at Picurian Feast, twenty two forty Iano Road, West Barnstable, Cape Cod Community College, for new annual common victualo license with indoor seating for one hundred and twenty five, and hours of operation are daily from seven a.m. to two thirty. I make a motion to accept. Second. Okay, roll call. Roll call. Larry Decker. With thumbs up. Thank you. Nancy Carlson Lidman. Yes. John Flores. Yes. David Nunheimer. Yes. That is unanimous. Thank you. And your license will be emailed by Aaron. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Okay, good luck. Thank you. Next you matter. I'm sorry. Next matter is Hearth and Kettle of Hyannis, DBA, Cape Cod Resort, 1225 uh, Hyannis Road, Route 132, Hyannis, for a change of manager on the annual all alcohol in holder license from William Catania to John Burcombe. Mr. Burcombe, how are you today? Doing well. How are you? Good. Uh, if you could describe to us your experience and what you intend to do there, that'd be great. Sure. Um, so I have 31 years of experience in the hospitality industry. Um, I've been with the Cape Potter for um, seven years and four months as their general manager. And I'm responsible for all operational aspects of the resort. Okay. Does anybody have any questions, Mr. Burkholm? 
Seeing none, I would entertain a motion. Arthur Kettle of Hyannis doing business as Cape Potter Resort, 1225 Iano Road, Route 132 Hyannis, for a change of manager on the annual all alcohol inholder license from <clears throat> Will Catania to John Burkham. I make a motion to accept. Second. Second. All right, roll call. Roll call vote. Larry Decker. Yes. Good to hear your voice. Thank you. Um, Nancy Carlson Lidman. Yes. John Flores. Yes. David Nunheimer. Yes. That is a full unanimous vote this time. Thank you. Thank you. As a, yeah, as a reminder, will require an ABCC approval. So the application will be sent up to the state and then Aaron will let you know when it has been approved. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Next matter is uh, change of manager, directors, and officers, CND Shamrock Inc., DBA, the 19th Old Tavern, 11 Barnstable Road, Hyannis, to amend the annual all alcohol power victual license as follows change of manager from Christopher J. Doherty to David Cronin, change of directors and officers, as well as stock to remove Christopher J. Doherty and amend uh, David Cronin's interest to president. And treasurer with 100% ownership. Good morning, Mr. Cronin. How are you today? Good morning. Very good. Thanks. Nothing's going to change, right? Other uh, than other than missing the big guy who was skinny, yeah. who was skinny at the time. Every day. <laughs> All right. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Cronin? Anybody from the public? Seeing none, I will take a motion. Nancy. Okay. Um, change of manager, change of directors and officers, change of stock. C and D Shamrock Inc. doing business as 19th Hole Tavern, 11 Barnstable Road, Hyannis, to mm -hmm. amend all alcohol, all annual all alcohol common victual license as follows. Change of manager from Christopher J. Doherty to David Cronin. Change of directors and officers as well as stock to remove Christopher J. Doherty and amend David Cronin's interest to president slash treasurer with 100% ownership. I make a motion to accept. Second. Roll call. Roll call, Larry Decker. Yes. Nancy Carlson Lidman. Yes. John Flores. Yes. David Nunheimer. Yes. That is unanimous, thank you. Uh, Mr. Cronin, our um, we will send the application up to the ABCC and let you know when it has been approved. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, the next matter is Katuit Fresh Market LLC, 737 Main Street, Katuit, to transfer the all an the annual wine and malt package store license from Katuit Beer and Wine, Inc., DBA, Katuit Beer and Wine, to Katuit Fresh Market LLC. The applicant also proposes a pledge of the license to the Cape Cod Cooperative Bank, DBA, the Cooperative Bank of Cape Cod. Post hours of operation are Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. The proposed manager is Megan Burdick, noting the following premises description, consisting of approximately 3,500 square feet on the first floor of a two-story building together with approximately 500 square feet of storage space in the basement. The premises consists of three rooms, areas for the market. One room will be dedicated to the beer and wine display, two toilets and an office and a basement storage area. I see Mr. Lawler again on this matter. This is Mr. Cabral's matter. I'm just here oh. representing the, um, uh, the seller. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. So, Mr. Cabral, I see you here. Yes. Good morning, Mr. Nunheimer. I represent Katuit Fresh Market LLC. Uh, the manager of Katuit Fresh Market LLC is Megan Burdick, and she is also present on this meeting. Uh, we have an application here for transfer of an existing license that's currently held by uh, by Katuit Beer and Wine Inc. Um, where 
basically going to look to take over that license. Uh, Ms. Burdick uh, has gone through the uh, alcohol serving training um, and does have a certificate that she can provide to the uh, license authority upon request. Um, we are also doing a pledge on this as uh, Ms. Bird is financing the acquisition of the license. Uh, the proposed note and proposed security agreement have been submitted. Uh, the principal amount of that loan is $112,074. Uh, Ms. Burdick does have the resources to purchase the license. However, coming into the winter, uh, it was decided to reserve the uh, capital in case of uh, in case of decreased cash flow in the business. Okay. David, I got a question. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Sure, fire away. He <clears throat> um, just listed some dollar amounts there. But in the application, it said business assets being acquired was 137000 That is correct. That is correct. And, by, and, and my second question is, um, in the application, it said it was a package store, but what was being purchased was wine and malt beverages. So am I to assume that there's no alcohol being sold? The license being sought is only to cover the, the existing license, which is a wine and malt beverage license. Okay, thank you. Anyone else have any questions? No, I, I'm just curious as to which location within that premises um, if, have you decided where to put the, the alcohol display? Yes, my client did. The display is actually going to go in the same area it was originally proposed by the current holder. Uh, and we have amended the uh, we've amended the lease so that now that full area is under my client's control, and that is one of the side rooms. Uh, if you're familiar with this with the store at all, when you walk in the doors, you have the cash register area. You have the uh, the prepared food counter directly ahead. The proposed location is a room that is off to the back right. If you're walking into the store from the front. Okay, so. I guess that negates my second question. The original plan for the the licensee that he's purchasing it from was going to put in a separate doorway. Correct. That was but, the original. Yep. But I'm I'm assuming that that's not going to happen now. No, we, we felt it was not necessary because of the my client now having control of the full space, uh, as well as the fact that we felt that it would be easier to maintain. Uh, observation and control of the area if it was not obstructed by a wall. Perfect. Thank you. And the wall never went out, the door never went up. So th there's no construction that's necessary. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Seeing none, I would take a motion. Could to it Fresh Market LLC 737 Main Street could to it to transfer the annual wine and malt package store license from Katuit Beer and Wine Inc., DBA Katuit Beer and Wine, to Katuit Fresh Market LLC. The applicant also proposes a pledge of the license to Cape Cod Cooperative Bank DBA, Cape, the Cooperative Bank of Cape Cod. Proposed hours of operation are Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m. to 11 p.m., and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. The proposed manager is Megan A. Burdick. Noting the following premise descriptions. The premise consists of approximately 3,500 square feet on the first floor of the two-story building, together with approximately 500 square feet of storage space in the basement. The premise, premises consists of three rooms, areas for the market, one room will be dedicated to the beer and wine display, two toilets, and an office, and the basement storage area. I make a motion to accept. Second. Roll call. Roll call. Larry Decker. Yes. John Flores. Yes. Nancy Carlson Lidman. Yes. David Nonheimer. Yes. That is unanimous. The application will be sent to the APCC for review and approval, and we will let you know when that has taken place. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Have Good a great luck. day. All right. The next matter is uh, was continued from our July 11th meeting.
Grand Cafe and Restaurant Inc., DBA Grand Cafe Restaurant, 350 Stevens Street, the transfer of the all alcohol um, and victual license and daily non live entertainment license from Four Seasons Trattoria and Hyannis, Inc., DBA Four Seasons Trattoria and Hyannis, to Grand Cafe Restaurant Inc., DBA Grand Cafe Restaurant Inc., hours of operation 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. daily. <clears throat> Daily non live entertainment is for recorded music and three TVs. And Mr. Blank is here to represent, I believe, the transferee. Mr. Wall is there on that, yeah. Oh. Um, so if you all remember, we were here back, I believe it was July or August, and there were issues involved with Grand Cafe and the Four Seasons and the blurring of some lines before the transfer. We volunteered to um, push out the transfer until uh, this date to allow for um, essentially get everything in order, uh, make sure everything was run smoothly and and separate those blurred lines. And I believe we've done that. We have here before you um, Jackson or and uh, Luis Paque, who have extensive experience uh, in the restaurant business. Uh, because of the um, issues, uh, though, uh, Luis does speak English, he, not as well as his son, um, who, you know, spent most of his, uh, his life in the United States. Um, we've uh, decided to have uh, Jackson uh, be the manager of a liquor license with Luis, um, you know, running the company. With respect to uh, the alcohol, both have been tips trained. Um, ha I've had extensive conversations with them about what's required of them, especially involving some of the issues that occurred uh, back in you know June and July. Uh, they have um, you know both been running restaurants uh, with the service of alcohol uh, in them um, for years, and um, we request your approval. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah. I, I believe it wasn't the issue the last time that they were using the uh, the menus of the uh, Four Seasons under their own brand name. That's they correct. That, they were That's, correct. Right. Yeah. That's what I was saying was the blurring of the lines. I, they, barely, they put the cart before the horse and we readjusted it and um, you know, they and you know we acknowledged that at the last meeting, and and that's why we had requested an extension uh, to kind of reset the clock, for lack of a better term. Don't do they still have the Grand uh, Cafe in Yarmouth? No, they do not have that anymore. No, no. Yeah. The Four Seasons Trattoria was in Yarmouth. So the four seasons, the four seasons was in Hyannis. Yeah, well, they, I'm sorry, the other one was in, you know. Yeah, yeah. Right. so they, you know, they, right now they presently work at the Four Seasons and they're intending to buy where they're working at and then rebrand it under the Grand Cafe. And with no longer a Grand Cafe in uh, Yarmouth, right? That's correct. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions? Seeing none, I take a roll call. Oh, a motion. Okay. Um, Grand Cafe Restaurant Inc. This is Grand Cafe Restaurant Inc. 350 Stephen Street, Hyannis, to transfer the all alcohol, common victualler, and daily non live entertainment licenses from Four Seasons Prateria in Hyannis, DBA. Seasons Trattoria in Hyannis to Grant Cafe Inc. DBA Grant Cafe Restaurant Inc. Hours of operation 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. daily. Daily non live entertainment is recorded for music and three TVs. I make a motion to accept. Second. Roll call. Roll call. Mr. Decker. Yes. Mr. Flores. Yes. Ms. Carlson Lidman. Yes. And Mr. Nunheimer. Yes. 
that is unanimous. Um, we will send the application to the ABCC. As a reminder, you are to not use the, you cannot use Grand Cafe's name in any sort until you get the approval from the ABCC, which Aaron will let you know when that happens. Okay. Thanks. Thank you for that reminder. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Uh, the next matter is Simone's Pizza Burger, Inc., DBA Ronnie's Pizza, 11 Ridgewood Avenue, Hyannis, to change the DBA from Ronnie's Pizza to Simone's uh, Burger Pizza. And I'm sorry, Mr. Blank, I was looking at that before when Mr. Lawler jumped in away. Not a problem. Thank you. Anyway, I have Justice and Pal Harris here next to me. I don't know how to shift my camera so that it goes the other direction, but um, of course, it's been a long transition. We wanted to thank you all for working with us, Jefferson, to establish a family restaurant, which you're going to see uh, once his name is changed so that he can go by uh, Simone's Pizza Burger. Uh, he will establish his own identity and a new menu. Uh, he's looking forward to uh, showing you a menu that has a, a vast assortment of authentic uh, Brazilian dishes, as well as American food and pizza. Uh, and of course, after he gets your approval uh, today, he does intend to go to the Board of Health and the Building Department. So that his menu and sign changes will be uh, fully permitted. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, yes. It, it, is he looking to operate the restaurant with no uh, alcohol or beer until he gets the approval from the ABCC? I believe we've obtain the approval from the ABCC. That is, that is correct. Just a change of name, Mr. Decker. They already have an existing all alcohol license. It's just an administrative change for the name. Not oh. adding any new types of operations or uh, services to their operation. The only reason I asked that was because on the staff report, it says reminder that they cannot operate Simon's or Simone's Pizza Burger until the ABC has approved it. The name. They cannot use the name is what the staff report said. Okay. So they can still use the alcohol. They have authority to do so. It's just the name itself needs to be um, finalized by the state. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Officer Kelsey, anything? No, we have we have no uh, concern over the name change. Okay, thank you. All right, with that, I'll take a motion. Okay, Simone's Pizza Burger Inc. doing business as Ronnie's Pizza, Eleven Ridgewood Ave, Hyannis, to change the DBA from Ronnie's Pizza to Simone's Pizza Burger. I make a motion to accept. Second. Roll call. Roll call, Mr. Larry Decker. Yes. Ms. Flores. Yes. Ms. Carlson. Uh, Carlson mm -hmm. Yes. And Mr. Nunheimer. Yes. That is unanimous. And just as, again, a reminder, do not use the name. You can get your Board of Health approvals. You can get your sign permits approvals, but you cannot put any name changes, sign changes, or anything until you get the okay from Aaron that the state has approved the name change. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Good luck. All right, uh, just I should have started off here, but uh, I take a motion with respect to the consent agenda, unless anybody has any questions about any of the entities on that agenda. I make a motion to accept as printed the consent agenda to make a motion to accept the consent agenda as printed. Second. Roll call. Roll call, Mr. Larry Decker. Yes. John Flores. Yes. Ms. Nancy Carlson Lidman. Yes. And Mr. David Nonheimer. Yes. That is unanimous. Thank you. 
Right, so we have two uh, discussions on for today. One uh, will, is the is uh, have to do with Jack's Lounge, three seventy three West Main Street, Hyannis, to hold a birthday party event on October five from nine p.m. to twelve p.m. Entertainment was provided by a disc jockey. This is a retroactive retroactive application um, and involves a police report. Uh, and we'll hear from Officer Kelsey, I guess, first to orient us to that matter. We have a couple of issues here. I don't know if you want to hear them in, a, in its entirety or if you want to deal with just the entertainment and the retroactive license separately. I think the entirety will go to the subject matter, so that'd be fine. Okay. Uh, so on October 5th, um, myself, Sergeant D'Angelo, and two other uniform patrol officers responded to Jack's Pizza. Um, and we did this um, in order to do a, a check of the property. Uh, I had gotten information from two independent sources that underage patrons were being served alcohol at this location. Uh, specifically, they said on Monday and Wednesday, uh, in the evenings, um, and it was related to one specific bartender who worked on both of those nights. Uh, on this Wednesday night, we did go in to our uniformed officers, and the uh, the direction was to card anybody who looked like they were under 30, uh, which we did if somebody had an alcoholic beverage in front of them. We did not uh, locate anybody who was underage with an alcoholic beverage in front of them or in their control on this evening. We did uh, have conversation with the manager and with that specific bartender, and I explained to them why we were there. Um, and I, I explained to them that we did have two independent reports of underage serving uh, in this location uh, on these evenings. Um, and we did have a discussion about that. They both uh, denied serving anybody underage, uh, but understood what my conversation with them was. And they both said that they were going to make sure that that type of behavior does not happen in that restaurant. While I was having conversation with them, I did also notice that they had a DJ set up for the evening. And I had conversation with the manager about that um, and explained to him that they don't have an entertainment license for a DJ. Um, he told me that the DJ was hired by the people that were running the birthday party and he had applied for a one day entertainment license. Um, he said that he had emailed back and forth with Liz, uh, this is Hearts Grove, and I explained to him, well, is it an email or did you fill out an application? He said that he filled out an application last week. So I explained to him again, I was like, well, if you put the application in, I'm sure that we can deal with this as a retro approval. I said, I'm not a big fan of the retro approvals, but from time to time, it has to happen. I go, but if you didn't put the application in and you have this DJ, you're going to be called in front of the board for a show cause hearing. So make sure that you're telling me the truth. He assured me that he put the application in and we were on our way. Um, as we're walking out the door, and for those of you that might be a little sensitive, please cover your ears. Um, from the, I'm not sure. I thought it was the DJ. He said it was the jukebox. But as we're leaving, they start playing Fuck the Police by NWA. Um, this was being played inside the bar as well as to the speakers that are outside the bar in the patio area. So anyone walking down the sidewalk or driving slowly with their windows open in a car could have heard this as well. Um, so. Obviously, uh, not a pleasurable situation to be in uh, on that evening. Uh, but the bottom line with the application is that the manager said that the application was put in a week before. It wasn't put in a week before because when I checked the next morning, I talked to Mrs. Logan. She stated that she did not receive any emails. Liz has stated that she did not receive any emails. And they did look onto the, uh, the town uh, permit uh, system. And they found that there was a one day application that was submitted at 10.15 the evening that I was there. 
and I left the restaurant around 10 o'clock that evening. Um, so the, those are that, that's the information that I have for you concerning the situation. Okay. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Yeah, I'd like to know what uh, Mr. Uh, Dupree has to say. Hello, how are you guys doing today? Uh, I am Timothy Dupree, the manager at Jack's Lounge. Beside me, I have the owner, Grace and Derek. Um, I have a couple things on both regard to the accusations of underage drinking, um, as well as additional steps that we have taken to prevent such matters. Um, uh, Officer Kelby stated that um, he had two separate reports of underage drinking. Um, and I, I just like to remind that a young face does not incur an incident of underage drinking as has, has reported. We, we recognize that not all of our former or current patrons at Jack's whose demographic for the last 35 years has been aging and becoming older and older have liked the younger crowd that is coming in and taking over their bar. Um, due to this sudden change of how the perception of Jack's has been for the past 10 years with the older clientele. No other concerns are based on the old way of business as the actual society is changing and Jack needs to change with it. Part of that process is gathering a, young, a younger generation to fall in love with Jack's the same way they and you all did when they were younger. With the change, some have become disgruntled and have began to act out to try to preserve the old ways. Again, a young face does not incur an incident of underage drinking as a person has reported. Many of our consistent long-term clients have come forward to say they're excited about the future of Jack and how the younger crowd has reminded them of how Jack's used to be back in the day. With this reigniting of energy, exuberance, and the possibility of Jack's staying as a continued place for community, gathering of ideas, understanding, and unity in the foreseeable future. As for the entertainment license, I pre previously talked with um, Mr. Ells, uh, the town manager, who put me in contact with Liz Hartgrove. Um, and I had contacted her earlier in the year, um, in uh, around July, regarding a full-time live entertainment license. And even, I believe in email correspondence, she sent me relative information regarding licensing and how to file. Again, this was in early July, which was what I was trying to explain to Officer Kelsey, um, I had stated that I'd been in correspondence with the licensing department, but I, I didn't state that for the past few weeks. What I did state was that I had filed a live entertainment license in the past week, which I, at the time I thought I had at the time of the statement. I had done this thinking it more of a formality to inform the town that it would be having entertainment as Jax currently has a license for non-live entertainment regarding a jukebox. And I thought under the same pretense, licensing a DJ is not constituted as a live ent entertainment. As I do not see it plainly listed in the town of Barnesville rules and regulations in 503-1 definitions. And if it is, uh, I, uh, I ask in the future that it be listed more plainly. May I make a comment? So let, let me finish first. I'm sorry. <clears throat> As I was filing the application online on my mobile phone a week prior, I reached the end of application. If you're familiar with the filing online, there's two buttons listed at the bottom, which I later found out on October 5th when I looked into the application that I thought I filed. One says save, the other says send. I had pressed save, but not knowing until the fifth when Officer Kelly had, Kelsey had asked about the application, and I looked after he left. I proceeded to file the application in good faith, paying the town, but not feeling confident in the application filing and furthering my search into the filing laws. I did not allow the DJ to play. When the officers were still at Jackson, the DJ took the few items that he had brought 
into the establishment, into his car, in front of Officer Kelsey and the other officers that were there. At that time, Officer Kelsey was reprimanding me for playing, for saying that the DJ had played fuck the police by the NWA. And I told him that DJ was not even set up or plugged in. And that all the music that was being played was from the jukebox, which is accessible through the AMI application on anyone's phone who was in the restaurant. The other officers in that situation actually had stated that they thought it was funny and were even laughing about it. While Officer Kelsey was still in the building talking to Mr. Estenville and I. When the song came on, Officer Kelsey became irate and yelled at my patrons to shut it down. We followed him outside to talk to him, explaining it was the jukebox with public access. As for the music being heard outside, he suggested that I not allow the exterior speakers to play such music, and I agreed. And I personally didn't agree with the song and have a personal respect for law enforcement personnel. And in the past, I've even set up events with the Yarmouth Police, uh, Chief of Police, and walked with them in a public display of unity during the Black Lives Matter movement. And also, Jack's Lounge is always donating pizzas to the Barnesville Police Department in past years. I personally have no qualms with law enforcement. Since I have removed the wiring from the exterior, exterior speaker to comply with Officer Kelsey wishes that no more music will be heard on the street. Um, I also don't see any rules or regulations pertaining to this in the rules or regulations since I, I had since educated myself on it. Uh, for for music being heard off premises, and I personally check the volume being emitted on a regular basis with a decimal meter to ensure that we are compliant with Town of Barnstable Law One Thirty Three Dash Two, which states exclamations or loud boisterous noises or boisterous singing by any person or group of persons, or in the use of as any device to amplify the aforesaid noise where the aforesaid noise is plainly audible at a distance of one hundred and fifty feet from the building dwelling structure, premise, shelter, boat, or conveyance in which form it is produced. The fact that the noise is played in the audible at distance of 150 feet from the building, dwelling structure, premise, shelter, boat, or conveyance from which it, it originates shall be evidence of a violation of this chapter. As for that night, the sound was not audible from 150 feet as the street is only 35 feet away from the building. Massachusetts also defines a noise, a noise, a noise ordinance as unreasonable or excessive noise. That shall be defined as noise measured in excess of 50 decibels between the hours of 11 p.m. and 7 a.m. or in excess of 70 decibels at all other hours when not measured closer to the lot line of a residential lot or the nearest affected dwelling unit. We are well within those limits in all directions. Is that all you have? Um, that's all I have. Yes. Ms. Lehman, you wanted to make a... Oh, Mr. Donner, may, may, yes. I, may I say something, please? Sure. All right. First and foremost, the accusation, as, as it was put, of the underage drinking just being young face, we responded to a domestic outside of Jack's in the parking lot, and the individual in question was ID'd and run by the police department and confirmed that she was 20 years old. It was her statement to the officers who responded that she was in there and that she had been drinking. So it's not just a random face. We actually had officers there on a call who confirmed the date of birth. Um, we did not bring that in front of the board as an issue concerning their license. It was put into the report as information. Um, same thing is with, with us there the other night. We're, we're not trying to have a conversation about them actually serving underage other than just information for the board. We're not trying to take action on that. At least the police department was not. Um, we certainly can be a little more vigilant with that if needed. Um, the comment about me becoming irate, I was definitely not happy. Irate, I don't think quite, uh, it didn't quite reach that level. 
Uh, also, I did not have any conversation with any of the patrons. My conversation was directed at the manager, the bartender, and the DJ. Um, I did tell the DJ to shut it down when that song came on, and he was standing behind his DJ equipment. Um, the, the comment about him walking by with his equipment as we were standing outside, I had never saw a DJ walking by with DJ equipment as we were standing outside. Not saying he couldn't have been doing that, but I wasn't paying attention to anybody other than the bartender and the manager on that evening. Um, I also believe that the conversation concerning the music outside, again, it wasn't being addressed as an anti-noise bylaw violation. Never said it was. The conversation was about the language that was being amplified outside of the restaurant. That That's it. Appreciate that. Okay. Ms. Hotchgrove, is there anything else you'd like to add and or educate us on the application process that was undertaken? Yeah, the application for an annual license was not received, unfortunately, Tim. Um, I don't know which application you were applying for. I actually, in the back end, can see ones that have been done and not have been submitted. They're in a like incomplete um, look. And unfortunately, I just looked while you were saying, because I was very... Um, I just wanted to make sure that I didn't miss something and um, and confirm both that the special entertainment as well as a, um, a regular entertainment license for a DJ to be permanent was not received. The special one, though, for the October 5th was received as indicated by the police report that it was after the interaction with Officer Kelsey. Um, but I don't have either emails from Mr. Ells also documenting back from July. So um, it could have been a phone conversation that you and I had, and I don't have any record of that. Um, but it's not that I'm not saying that it didn't happen. I just don't have record, and it's not um, jogging my memory. So um, that's it from my end. Thank you. Oh, as, as for the filing of the permanent license, it was more of information. I never proceeded with filing the permanent license. I just want to clarify something. Ms. Hotchgrove, are you saying that there was no email conversation back in early July between you and Mr. Debris? Correct. Thank I you. don't have any record of that. Thank you. Thank you. I spoke with somebody in the phone on the phone, but the conversation was going back and forth. Yeah, my aunt was contacted by somebody in the town regarding me. Um, she left a message. Right. We, like and I did I do have phone calls from Mrs. Hartgrove. All right. Uh, Ms. Elizabeth Carol Nancy. You had a comment. Um I I had a, I had a comment in relation to the um live entertainment. The DJ is a person, correct? Yes. And he brings equipment. So how would you better describe live entertainment if the DJ is a person? I don't understand. Like plain, plainly written as it's like um, a, a type of live entertainment. So like <clears throat> it's, it's easy, it's easy be, um, in a sense of if you're looking at the actual law, Dated in here, it describes many many different things, such as like uh, dancing by entertainers or performance, arts, karaoke, recorded or live music, or use of the amplification system. It's like, and that's kind of vague. Um, a, a DJ is a person. That's not vague. It's an individual who brings equipment. That's I, how is that not vague? I can add something to that. My name's Derek. And, Hi, Derek. Um, hey, it's good to meet everybody. And um, first of all, this is an unfortunate situation that happened, and I'm glad we're able to, to talk about it and talk it through. Um, I don't know. I just look at the our jukebox is quite quite sophisticated, and, and I've often thought that do we've got enough. AMA, AMI is a big enough library to get that thing cranking enough that um, 
why do we even need you know a person to right. to play music? So you know, I get what you're saying. It's a live person bringing yeah exactly. How does that differ from a live person playing drums or a live person singing? But you know, just you know, I, I guess the difference is there's really not a, in, in a practical sense. There's not a whole lot of difference between a, a jukebox and a and a DJ, um, in particular for a, a place like this. Uh, the difference being that um, you can certainly request specific songs from the individual to play them, uh, or if someone could take a you know just play requested songs in the, in the jukebox, you know, which is very you know technology technologically friendly as far as being able to shuffle songs and things like that. And um, so I can get it either way. Um, and I'm not going to dispute whatever the thinking is, but I'm just throwing that out as some of the something to think about. Um, you know, as far as you know, just going back to um, you know, we you know, we're in a tough um, you know, environment. I know I know Tim and Felix, they've got the appropriate training and the like. We had, you know, when you know, our track record over 30 plus years, you know, we've never had violations, knock on wood. Um, certainly we've been confronted with them. We haven't we seem to have passed any of the um of the um you know the the, the checks and, and and I'm glad you know you are checking because that you know keeps things from getting um complacent and I'm and I'm really glad you didn't when you did the check inside the restaurant, you didn't um, find anyone underage. And, and I can't speak for the, the individual or situation outside because I wasn't here. But, um, you know, I mean, that could be, and, and you know, and, and, a, and a former customer, it, it's like, that's, I mean, just being devil's advocate, a lot of that is, is hearsay. Um, you know, we've got some customers that, you know, for other for a variety of reasons may no longer be welcome here at Jackson. And um, you know, you could scroll through Facebook and you could find a number of uh lines to that effect that are somewhat negative, but you can see a lot of positive stuff too. So I just throw that out as um, you know, take that, you know, what, what an individual might might say for without any, you know, proof as uh you know, that as, as, as hearsay or, or something they think about, or they could be totally credible. Go ahead, Dave. I'd like to say something since I've been here since 1985. First opened my family for just, and yes, I was Tim's age then. Um, and it was tough because I was the boss and I was only 24, 25. And to stand up in front of everybody, all my employees who were older than I was tough. This is going way back. And think the jukebox. The jukebox, as you all know, and I know, used to be records, and you'd go and pick out, and there were only certain ones, and we deleted. We would have them take out anything that was bad. Now, with the new way it is these days, it's controlled by computers. Anybody can, and I don't even know how to use that thing, can pick whatever song they want on their phone. Don't even have to go to the machine and put money in. So I'm very upset that that song was played. I'm not here many nights because I'm much older now, but um, we always have a manager on duty always. So I, I apologize for that song, being, and I will speak to uh, Bruce Lackey, who does handle our and make sure that that's gone because it's crazy. I'm sorry, officers. I'm sorry, are you finished, ma'am? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Flores? Yeah, just a comment. Uh, I know that um, music that's played on the jukebox um, is pretty much uh, protected under the free speech amendment, but nonetheless, I think it's incumbent upon the establishment to be more judicious in terms of the types of music that are allowed to be played. And as far as as, as far as taking uh, someone's um, um, phone and being allowed to access the jukebox. Uh, I've never heard of that. Uh, and if that's, that's the case. It's a, incredibly common. It's, a, it's the only way to do it these days. Somebody can play a song not even being here on their phone. 
Yeah, they have to have access to any location. They can just type in any name and play a song. Like 50 bucks it's, a song. I just opened the AM app. We got Jacks, we got Duck in, 19th Hole, Quarter Deck, Foxhole, Sea Dog Pub, Sandbar, Lost Dog, Woodshed, Weary Travelers. And so on. All right. I think I think on the object of a comment is that you need to maintain some control over that, whether or not the technology uh, is what it is. You you need to maintain some control over what gets played in your establishment, especially when you're using the argument that you're pro police and you've got a song that's able to be played. That's entirely that's not. Point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We agree. Officer Kelsey, do you have something else to add? I thought I saw you wave to me. Yeah, I mean. I'm I'm hearing all the conversation and I understand why the conversation's there. Um, I feel like a lot of this is getting muddy. Yeah, and I'm gonna, I'm going to unmuddy it for you. All right, because I was going to the issue that we're here to talk about is this application. Yeah, and we're getting into legal definitions and understanding and vagueness. Yeah, bottom line is this: whether the law or the town policies are written a, a specific way. The manager on that evening knew that he was supposed to have a license. He said that he had applied for the license. So there's no vagueness there. Whether he agrees with the way that the uh, the description is written, he acknowledged that he knew that there was supposed to be a license, and he said that he had applied for the license, and the license was not applied. Yeah. That, that's what that's the, the issue. Yeah. yeah. But he did. He, he has a computer when he types it out, he'll put it into his computer. Yeah, I, listen, I, this is about not applying for a license and not doing it effectively, even if you did it in advance. Some of the arguments you made, frankly, strain credulity in my book. Anyway, so that's that's the situation. I think you should appreciate the fact that the police did not issue you a so show cause hearing for the prior violation, which was clearly documented with an underage drinker. Uh, and second of all, um, those regulations are entirely clear, okay? So it's not an old versus new client issue. It, it, it's straight up what it is and you need to comply with the regulations, which we reviewed and had public comment on five years ago, if I recall, and there's never been a challenge to those rules in any event. All right, so the matter is that you should have applied for, for a license. You didn't, um, I'd hear a motion on granting a retroactive license with the understanding that in the event that you have future issues, you, you know how to apply and when to apply. Anybody wanna make a motion on that? I make a motion. Sorry, I'm a little, I, I'm lost in my paperwork. Pardon me. <laughs> it's number two. Oh, thank you. Discussion on PD report 22-47330 and the retro approval application made by Jack's Lounge, Timothy Dupree, 373 West Main Street, Hyannis to hold a birthday party event on October 5th, 2022, from 9 p.m. to 12 p.m. Entertainment was provided by a disc jockey. I make a motion to accept. Have a second. second. Thank you. Second. Roll call. Roll call, Larry Decker. Yes. Don Flores. Yes. Nancy Carlson from Lidman. Yes. And David Nunheimer. Yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. You've got your license retroactively. I hope there'll be no further problems on any scale covered by the regulations, whether it be underage drinking, um, sound, or other various issues. So good luck. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right, the next matter is uh, a discussion for violations occurring on October 13 for the Harbor Club, DBA, Trader Ed's, 11 Willow Street, Hyannis, which has a seasonal all alcohol common victual license. Officer Kelsey. Um, this situation on the, on the night in question, we were out doing uh, random checks on a number of different uh, 
bars and restaurants in town. Um, myself, two other uniformed officers went to Trader Reds. And while we were there, um, we observed a young lady who uh, was highly intoxicated. Uh, she was sitting in one of the golf carts um, that belongs to the Marino Trader Reds uh, with a friend as well as staff from Trader Reds with her. Um, had conversation with Mr. Kirker and Mr. Shea um, concerning what was going on. They said that the young lady uh, obviously was intoxicated, that they were looking for her friends, uh, other friends at that time uh, to get her assistance and then get her to a safe place. Um, I tried to talk with the young lady and she was too intoxicated to actually even speak. Uh, and then she got sick on herself while we were having a conversation as she started to come to a little bit. It was decided that she would go to the hospital to be checked out, which she did. Um, and through conversations with her friends and asking about her identity, it was determined that she was underage and had used a fake ID to get into uh, the, the establishment. Um, we were able to confirm that the ID was fake. We seized the ID. Um, she went to the hospital and a report was written. Uh, while we were there, another young lady tried to get in with a fake ID uh, right in front of us. Um, and the doorman who was working at that time uh, identified the ID as fake, called us over. We had another conversation and we seized that ID. Um, it, was a, it was a fairly busy night uh, on, this, on this night. Um, besides the fact that we had two young ladies uh, try to obviously get into the establishment, one did. Um, and then we had another gentleman, I actually sort of forgot about this. Uh, he showed up. I think he had been in the establishment. He had left, wanted to get back in. They weren't going to allow him back in because he was in no shape to be going back into this establishment. Uh, the staff, again, identified that and stopped him. Um, he was to the point where he just was being unreasonable, uh, started to get a little bit loud. He was being confrontational with the staff as well as the police department. So he actually ended up getting placed in protective custody uh, and we brought him back to the station. Um, so it was just one of those situations where it, all of this stuff just sort of happened right in front of us. <laughs> um, I will say that in the years that I have been a police officer as well as um, doing this job with, with, with you and for you, um, I've not had uh, a situation like that at any establishment. Um, <laughs> definitely not Trader Reds. Uh, they they seem to be uh, one of the busier establishments in town for sure. Um, so obviously there's more opportunity for bad things to happen. But I also think that their staff does a pretty good job trying to keep things in order. Um, so this was definitely something that was un unfortunate on this evening, but I don't see it as something that um, myself uh, or the police department is is uh, super concerned about this being an everyday thing. Okay. Yes, Mr. Nunheimer, um, this was really, um, I will let you know that this is really a discussion to bring uh, Mr. Kirker and Trader Eds before you so we can just have a discussion as to how um, action or uh, proactive measures can be taken place for the next season. Um, it's really just to, you know, have, again, a face-to-face -face conversation about this. So, thank you. Yeah, uh, knowing uh, Mr. Kirker and Mr. Shea, I'm sure that uh, while the police were there, uh, their response was appropriate, and I'm sure that they probably did the appropriate follow-up um, uh, as far as the patrons were concerned. Uh, I know that particular location. I know it's always been well-established and well-run and super organized. So I was surprised when, obviously, this came before us as a uh, issue for the licensing board. But I'm sure that through this process that both Mr. Kirk or Mr. Shea and his staff are well aware of what the consequences might be and um, that they do everything within their power and their energy to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Mr. Decker, you had a comment? No, I, I just assumed that in the past year that the that, Tree that Reds hasn't had, had any um, reason to make calls for the police assistant during that time. Um, well, I'll introduce myself first. I'm Wayne Kirker. I, I 
been here at Hyannis Arena. This is my 46th year. And uh, our manager is John Shea. The two of us have been, been uh, together on a trade event for 25 years. And I don't know if we've had to make any police calls this year. We, we have called when we need to. Um... Well, the law tells us, with, I, the law does say we have to eject somebody. We're supposed to uh, call the police. We try to be um, rational about that because if we find some minor thing and they are obviously no threat to the community or to themselves, we just get them, we just tell them, you've had enough, you, you, you can move along. If we get somebody that we think may visit another establishment and, and, and be uh, boisterous or is so drunk that they can't handle themselves like um, like they like we felt about this uh, lady that night, we uh, either get somebody to take them home if, if they're with friends, or we call the police to say, or, or an ambulance, I suppose, if we feel as though that's necessary. But in uh, but I think you would find that uh, our calls due to problems are very minimal because I've not, this was the only night that uh, I know of, and obviously there's that uh, where we did call the police and they needed to come help us with the situation. Were there other things going on? Um, first of all, we didn't call. Officer Kelsey showed up um, to do a compliance check, but we have called in the past when we need assistance. But first of all, I'd just like to introduce myself. To, uh, I know a few of the board. My name is John Shea. I've been a resident in Boston for over 35 years. In that time, I've had I've held three liquor licenses of three successful restaurants. And never had an infraction. This is how I make my livelihood. So I do take it very serious. Just if I might, uh, Mr. Sh Mr. Shea, uh, the police report infers that you have a program relative to training uh, door people with, with respect to the fake ID epidemic that seems to be going around. Is that true? We do. We've always had. And since this incident, we've talked to Officer Kelsey and we're trying to make it better than it's ever been. Uh, there's new technology out there now. The kids are buying their fake IDs from China and it, there's scanners now that, that can help read them. So we're looking into all that. Um, we have an outline. We train our staff. Uh, we've trained them after this incident. Again, we've made up a whole rules that we're not going to read off to you what we've done if you want me to. I, I mean, I, I, I've got to say, with my experience with the volume of uh, people that you have coming and going from that place, it's usually not a big problem, it seems to me, as a spectator. So I, I understand it. This fake ID stuff is very difficult. Does anybody else have any questions or comments for Mr. Kirker or Mr. Shea or Officer Kelsey? I I appreciate you working with Office Kelsey to try to make this a better program, and uh, maybe we can better spread it around so that nobody else has these ID problems. So I, I agree. All right, I appreciate it. Uh, anything else that uh, we need to deal with? All right, you guys can go back to work. Well, thank you, and thanks for the opportunity to explain uh, the situation. We take it very, we're very serious about it all. And we have a, uh, a very tough, pretty large security force there because when people leave Trader Reds, they're not out onto the streets, you know, they're still in the, in the marina, they're still in the boat yard and we can't afford them to be, um, to, to cause a nuisance there. So we pay more attention than the average place needs to. And we'll continue doing that. And we'll continue trying to, trying to find better ways to, to uh, figure out who the um, which of these ideas are, are phonies, but and but I have to say that that's become very difficult. The ideas, the phony IDs today are um, they're just well done. Yep, you got to stay ahead of the curve. All right, well, thank you very much, gentlemen. Appreciate it, Office Kelsey. Thank you for that, and I'm glad we had that discussion. Uh, let's see. Moving right along, we have uh, police department updates. Um, nothing specific other than I just want to put out just so the public can hear. 
we are still investigating um, limited, but some incidences where people's drinks um, are being tampered with in establishments. Um, so we had a, a situation as recently as last weekend. Um, so it's still out there, it's still happening. Um, so we just want people to be aware of that. Okay, well, thank you for that. Another unfortunate event of technology. Um, licensing department updates. Yes, actually, a good thing for technology. We are going to be launching uh, online renewals for uh, liquor licenses starting in November through OpenGov, which is our townwide permitting process. So um, everything will be done electronically this year. Um, so um, alcohol license establishments for annual licenses should be expecting email plus also some instructions on it or links to videos that we are working on right now to um, help them through the process to, to uh, open up their account. And Aaron, again, has done an amazing job of inserting all of the information so it is ready for them and it's linked properly to their email addresses. So they don't have to do any legwork. They can just review it and hit the submit button with along a couple of attachments that are generally required, such as the workers' comp and the certificate of liability insurance. So again, thank you, Aaron, for all of that, your work on getting all of these liquor licenses, which we have 150 plus than the entertainment licenses as well. So she's done an amazing amount of work to get this done. Um, in the spirit of customer service. So thank you. Um, in though dovetailing on that, as you can see from the consent agenda, uh, we have begun the 23 uh, renewal season. So you are getting all of the non-alcohol licenses as of right now, and, um, and we are ahead of schedule. So as of right now, we have 50 applications that just were renewed today by you. And we will have more on next uh, month in November for the consent agenda. So, again, we are really doing a, a good job of getting these done in ahead of time so they don't have to worry about it during the busy holiday season when they should be focused on um, serving our patrons in the holiday season. So, uh, thank you again for all of your work, Erin, uh, on that. And I'm available for questions if you need anything. Thank you. No, that's fantastic. Thank you, Erin. That's great. If I may, Mr. Uh, uh, Vice Chair Nunheimer, just uh, I couldn't do it without Liz, the team effort for sure. Um, oh, we knew I, that. I, I think the alcohol licensees will be pleased by um, how easy this renewal is. Yeah, assuming they can figure it out. Some people can't figure out the difference between save and send, no pun intended. <laughs> In we any event, that. Uh, one other matter I skipped over that we need to. Uh, do is the approval of the minutes on September 12th. I make a motion to approve the minutes of September 12th, 2022. And I will second that. Roll call. Roll call. Larry Decker. Yes. John Flores. Yes. Nancy Carlson Lidman. Yes. And David Nonheimer. Yes. That is unanimous. Thank you. And our next meeting is. November 14th. 14th. Live or on video? Um, we have yet to hear any confirmation from the uh, town council as to their preference for us. And um, the reason, again, for today being switched over was that they needed the hearing room for uh, elections, uh, for early ballots and protection. So they're using that space for the election workers. Um, and we had such a large agenda that we were worried that we could not sit comfortably in the selectmen's room. We will keep you updated on whether or not the November uh, meeting is in person or virtual. Um, as an FYI, and kind of weird to say, we will be also putting on the November 14th agenda the 23 calendar of um, meetings coming up. It's very weird, and yes, yes. Um, <laughs> It's nice to see and plan ahead so we'll know which meetings that we schedule our time accordingly. So, um, yes, we don't know, but I will let you know as soon as we hear something. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, we will stand adjourned until November 14th, either in person or on TV. All right. Thank you all.
Happy Halloween. We have to do a roll call. Oh, sh- we need a motion. Oh. I, 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 make a, a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Thank you. A second. Thank you. I roll call vote. Larry Decker. Yes. Don Flores. Yes. Nancy Carlson Lidman. Yes. And David Nonheimer. No, I want to stay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, still, you're outvoted. So. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Officer Kelsey. And Thanks, everybody. Else. Thanks. Happy Good job, everyone. Thank you. 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 Thank you.